Conversation, I promised you earlier, first aid rules, simple skills that can help save lives as the world makes marks World Safety Day. And I have a great team here this morning, led by Andrew Muruka, who is the Deputy Director of Occupational Safety and Health Services, as well as a, a two great um, paramedics, Stella Sakine and Henry Odiambo. Thank you guys for making time on this Saturday morning. <laughs> and I just want us to jump straight into this conversation. So if you're at home, you really want to pay attention to this. Um, Andrew. Yes. First of all, tell me about World Safety Day. Um, I know the whole thing behind this uh, this year is health at work, but we want to take a look at simple, you know, skills that can help save lives, and we'll also dive into uh, practical skills that we can do at home. But tell me just a little bit about um, World Safety Day. Thank you very much, uh, Cindy, for having us on this program. The World Day for Safety and Health is being held today worldwide. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, we have uh, our cabinet secretary, who is going to be our chief guest. He's going to address the nation from uh, at the river, mm -hmm. National Industrial Training uh, Authority at the river center. Uh, the main purpose of World Day for Safety and Health is to uh, commemorate those who have passed on, or those who have died, or those who have been seriously injured uh, at work or in the course of employment and these uh, are in millions mm -hmm. every year. Uh, the second uh, purpose of World Day for Safety and Health is to uh, focus government or member country attention towards the global burden of occupational diseases and injuries at work. Right. And finally, um, it is supposed to uh, put in place uh, workplaces to ensure that they put in place uh, safety and health preventative measures mm -hmm. so that occupational accidents and diseases do not occur. And if they occur, put in place emergency measures to take care of the injuries and compensate. All right. Yeah. And there's a program, or should I say, a fund known as Onsh Fund, which is a national fund to create awareness. Yes. Um, tell me a little bit about that as well. Thank you. The Osh Fund, the Occupational Safety and Health Fund, is a, a government fund uh, in, into which uh, workplaces Every workplace in this country is supposed to uh, contribute uh, 3,000 shillings every year or annually and ensure that their workplaces are registered at a cost of about 2,000. So they pay into the Occupational Safety and Health Fund about 5,000 shillings every year. Oh. And every workplace in this country is supposed to register. All right. Yes. Stella, how long have you been a paramedic for? This is my 12th year. Wow, 12 years? Yeah. <laughs> and Henry? <laughs> eighth year. This is your eighth year. Yes. All right, so you guys will take us through a few of these particularities that we can do at home, right? Mm -hmm. I know the audience is paying close attention. So first aid rules, what do you want us to start with this morning? Um, first aid rules, um, these are um, subsidiary legislation, main under the main act, the Occupational Safety and Health Act. Mm -hmm. And the main purpose of this is to have a standard consistent uh, uniform system for training of uh, first aiders in workplaces and ensuring that first aiders are deployed according to the number of employees in every workplace. So, um, and also to ensure that only companies or organizations approved by the Director of Occupational Safety and Health Services are allowed to train first aiders because we are looking forward to very highly skilled personnel, as you will see in a moment. All right, can you yeah. take us through this? Yeah. Um, so, Henry, what would you yes. want to teach us this morning first? I can see you have a, quite a few um, equipments with you. Yes, I have a uh, few equipments. I'll start with CPR, right? Eh? Fantastic. Uh, how to do CPR. How to do CPR. <laughs> yes, is it like in the movies? <laughs> uh, I'll try to make it real. <laughs> Let's do this. All right, take us through this. All right, uh, we'll normally do it in a dummy. Okay. That is, uh, this is our dummy, which uh, we are going to use uh, CPR on it, okay. uh, and uh, this is an adult. Uh, I'll just place it around here. This is an adult. Whenever you find an adult who has collapsed, what is the first few steps that you're supposed to do? Mm -hmm. uh, CPR means cardiopulmonary resuscitation, whereby someone is not breathing mm -hmm. adequately uh, to support their life, or their heart has stopped, mm -hmm. or they are not at all breathing. Okay. So the first key step when you're at home, uh, you just need to make sure you're safe first and try to get response from this particular personnel. I'll tag him, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown is yes. our guy. Yes, say good. Hello, Mr. Brown, hello, can you hear me? Hello, try to tap. Okay. There's no response. If you're alone, you need to shout for help. 
to make sure someone else come. And then you need to open the airway, try to see, is Mr. Brown breathing or not breathing? Try to do a health tilt and then try to check. Look at the abdominal movement or the chest movement mm -hmm. uh, for up to 10 seconds okay. or uh, a minimum of five seconds. Okay. When you notice Mr. Brown is not uh, breathing or uh, breathing in a way that cannot support life, you need to initiate and make someone call an emergency medical help. And uh, if you have a phone, it's essential for you to make an emergency medical help. And then you start CPR by compressing the chest. Normally you're doing the work of the heart and also giving rescue breaths to uh, this particular uh, casualty, at least to sustain the body movement of oxygen and also blood in the system. Mm -hmm. So in CPR, you're going to use your heel, place the heel at the center of the cas uh, your casualty's chest, mm -hmm. and then interlock them, make them straight, and then we're going to perform 30 chest compression, pushing hard, pushing fast, to facilitate the uh, pumping, the blood moving to the vital organs. Mm -hmm. So you're going to push up to 30 chest compressions, mm -hmm. one and two and three and four. <laughs> Six and seven and eight and nine and ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, fifteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Mm -hmm. So after thirty chest compression, you're going to open the airway again. Make sure you have a protective mask because you need to be also safe. And then you place onto uh, the casualty's mouth. You pinch the nose and then you give two rescue breaths. So you breathe in. You breathe into the casualty. You give in oxygen to the casualty. And then you repeat the sequence until, uh, number one, the help that you call arrived. has arrived. Okay. Or the casualty regains consciousness. Or you are too exhausted to continue. Okay. And you mean when you mean exhausted that uh, you like to do it to others the way you, you like them to do unto, unto you. Okay. So this is very essential whenever you notice someone has collapsed and they are not breathing yeah. or their heart has stopped. Yeah. It's the key thing. You normally have a chain of survival whereby you need to detect. Once you have detected they need help, mm -hmm. initiate an emergency phone call, then start CPR okay. and then continue. When the paramedics now arrive, they're going to take over. By that, you'll be actually perfusing the body system, the brain, the heart and the lungs, the I, oxygen. I noticed you, 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 you tapped his... Um, his lower part of the the, the, the chin, the chin to check and the bony part, the bony part. If yes. Mr. Brown is breathing, yes. But we've seen people also checking, for example, for or their for parts. The parts. Yeah. Uh, for the lay personnel, you'll find them. They'll, it will be difficult to maybe something hard for them to get the parts. Exactly. Yes, that's why actually the part that is needed is actually the carotid parts, uh -huh. in which we normally like them at least. You are, did, uh, do you see the rise and falling of the chest okay. or some abdominal movement? Okay. That's the key thing. So up to ten seconds. The best is when uh, you put yes, someone's the best chin up. Thing, yes, put someone chin up at least to lift up the tongue okay. so that you can be able to listen are they breathing so you listen with your ears you look with your eyes and you feel the warmth okay. in the chin. but then henry it's not all of us that have this i mean it's not like you're carrying or this the, in your pocket the mouth mask yeah uh, at some time we are we are normally being told that if you feel uneasy for you to give oxygen yes. you can only perform hands only cpr and can still hands-on CPR be able to still deliver the same effective response? Uh, yes, because you're going to actually push the blood to the vital organs. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. So that's with a grown person. Yes, that's with, with a grown baby. person. Uh, with a baby, uh, mostly baby, uh, it's uh, less than one year, <coughs> okay. an infant. Are still the same. The procedure is still the same. Make sure you're in the safe area, safe zone. And then uh, to the infants, we normally prefer them. Do not put them on the mattress or on the couch because whenever you're doing CPR, the baby's going to sink. Uh -huh. So place them in a firm place, very firm place. And whenever you are in a firm place, still the same, tap the baby's soul to get response. Hello, baby brown, to see if they're going to respond because they have more responsive nerves on the chin. And then you're going to open the air at least, make it in a neutral position. Do not over hyperextend. Mm -hmm. And then all the same, <coughs> check for breathing to find if the baby is breathing, you look at the abdominal and the chest movement for up to 10 seconds. Okay. Once you notice they are not breathing, the technique is you're going to give them uh, five initial rescue breaths first. Oh, with the baby? They, with the baby, you start with the five. Because their heart stop or not breathing is due to lack of enough oxygen supply to yes. the body system. Yes. So you start by giving them at least five. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this time round, you're not going to 
pinch the nose and, and like to the adult. And I'm, I notice you're also not going to pump the chest. Uh, we'll pump the chest, but this one you start with the breathing first. first okay. Because uh, they normally go into respiratory arrest first, then cardiac arrest. Uh -huh. Unlike to the adults, where they go to cardiac arrest, then respiratory arrest. That's important. Mm -hmm. So with grown men, with grown people rather, yes. both men and women, you start yes. with pumping of the chest. The chest mm -hmm. first, 30 yeah. chest compressions, then you go to two artificial and ventilations. And with babies, it's the other with, way With the around. baby, you start with the five initial rescue breaths, then you go to giving now 30 chest compression. Okay. So in this one, when you give five initial rescue breaths, until you just see the chest rise. Do not overblow the chest of the baby because you can pass the lungs. It's a small lungs. So you deliver five. And this one, you're not going to pinch the nose, simply because uh, uh, your mouth is big and the space uh -huh. between the nose and the baby's mouth is small. Yeah. So you give it, and then uh, once you give rescue breaths, up to five, then using two fingers at the center of the chest. Two? Two fingers now to the baby. Okay. At the center of the chest, then holding uh, now the baby's head, mm -hmm. then you, you, you compress. Wow. Up to 30. So make sure you push hard, you push fast, and you allow the chest to, to recoil. Once you finish 30, you'll come back and give two rescue breaths. Two rescue breaths. Yes. Okay. So the sequence is always 30 chest compression, two rescue, rescue breaths. breaths. Wow. Okay, I've seen sometimes like maybe a baby will eat and then they start choking. Or oh, a baby will eat and then they start choking? Yes. Maybe yes. Stella, you want to come uh, yes. help us with that? I can do that. I have my baby here. You have, yes. yes. So like a, a, a baby tends to eat or yeah. if they're taking any liquids and then they start um, choking. Yeah. Um, or if they're eating a sweet yeah. and it gets stuck, let's say, in, in, in the yeah. throat area. Yeah. Yeah. How do we go about that? Okay. Uh, this is a baby, this is an infant. Mm -hmm. It's uh, zero months to one year old. Okay. So my baby is choking. So what I'm supposed to do, I want to struggle remove what is there, like the object in the baby's mouth. Yeah. So I need to give back slabs. Like this is the position I'm supposed to handle my baby. Then I'll do the slabs, okay? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be very hard because this is a baby. Yeah. You might break the ribs, okay? Yeah. So. Slowly go, one, two, three, four, five, and then I check. I check if the object is out. Ah. If it's not out, I don't interfere. Ah. Instead of putting, sticking a finger inside the baby's mouth. Yeah, I don't interfere. I'll do this. Uh -huh. I'll start. One, two, three, four, five. There's nothing. I'll continue. Are you able to see the hand? Yes. Down yes. there? Yes. I make sure that I don't block the airway, like the nose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I continue the blows, okay? The slabs, I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five. You could hear the baby crying. Maybe it's out. So I'll just remove it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. As simple so, as that. So I've noticed also the angle in which the baby is lying. The baby has to slant. Has to slant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, so you do this, the back slaps, about yeah. five of them. Yeah. Check if they're not responding now, you do the front chest. chest yeah. Thrust. The chest thrust. Yeah. And you chest use thrust. two of your yeah. fingers. Yes. yes. To sort of, and, and you do it like, is it, would you do 30 times as well? No, two. No, so just, just, only just five. five. Just five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if they're not responding, you go back again. So it's back and forth exactly. until you get a response. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But in case the baby doesn't respond, maybe they become unconscious will start CPR. Andrew, I mean, some of these things that we are learning today are simple life skills that, mm. it's sad to say, I didn't even learn in school. And right. they are that simple, you know? And mm -hmm. some of these things happen at home when you have your small sister or brother who is choking on food. And mm. we've heard of those incidents, even where a household doesn't know what to do. Mm. And you end up losing a child because the child was choking on food. Where can people, where can Kenyans get this sort of training? Uh, that is good, uh, very good question, Zinzi. Um, for workplaces, mm -hmm. we have approved more than 30 uh, organizations. And uh, they are available on our website, www.labor.go.ke. Mm -hmm. The list of those approved organizations are listed there. Now, those companies are, are been tested and confirmed to be having competent trainers. And they are able to train very good facilitators for the workplace. I, I guess because first aid is always the same, they can use the same companies because they are approved to train any other 
any other person because first aid is a crossbow. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you're already within the government, have you thought of pitching this to also schools? I mean, before I start learning about uh, you know osmosis, I should learn such simple life skills. I even at a young age, at five years old, you know, because you never know. Your, you and your friend might be swimming, and then your friend drowns. Simple things that accidents that happen. So, have you thought of having this incorporated inside um, the curriculum? Actually, that's a very good question yeah. because we are at the tail end of that process. The new curriculum already has uh, issues to do with safety and security mm -hmm. embedded within the curriculum. So where the curriculum, the new curriculum is rolled out by government, we will be having all this in place. Okay. But for teachers, because they are employees, they are, it's already a requirement. So they, we should be having teachers yeah. who are trained in first aid in schools. They so should that have they, learned that. Yeah. No, the, 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 the people we have approved, these uh, more than 30 organizations, their work is to train those workplaces mm -hmm. first aiders. Right. so that they are ready to deal with any emergency that may arise. Henry, yes, what else are you going to show us this morning? All right, I can just need to go through the, the basic first aid equipment, yes. first aid kits, yes. because uh, in any, any organization you need to have the first aid equipment and even at home, mm -hmm. it can be uh, effective and while. So this is just a simple universal first aid kit. Mm -hmm. It has some contents that can be able to be used at home uh, to make sure you're good, you can be able to, to work well and uh, assist in simple injuries that are at home. Mm -hmm. So for instance, in any f first aid equipment, you'll have gloves, which is very essential for you uh, to use. You have some bandagings, in which all these bandagings you can be able to use to dress simple mm -hmm. wounds, simple cuts, and uh, thermometer. Any infant, when dealing with infants, temperature, you need to be sure you're checking the temperature, not to have fever, and make sure you take them uh, to hospital. The mouth, uh, the gloves, very essential. Uh, the ones that you are using. Y yes, the, the, the gloves, the mouth mask, uh, we have mouth mask here, which okay. are also part of the first aid uh, kit. And all, yes, these are the universal uh, masks eh, that you'll find. Remember when you're dealing with the, any injuries at home, so these are key things that you're supposed to have. And also, the government is starting to insist that every uh, vehicle also supposed to have to this. To have this as well. Yeah, How much is a pack like this? Oh, a pack like this? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, 2,500. 2,500. Where shillings. can Kenyans buy yes. this? Yeah. Uh, in, uh, at St. John, we normally supply. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, any farmers you can be able to get uh, the, the, the first aid kit. Because it's mm -hmm. essential to have such a small kit in your house. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very, 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 very essential eh, okay. to have that. that. So that is actually a home use kind of a kit. Okay. Which will need, uh, it will be able to help you uh, deal with cuts, uh, bleedings, uh, burns, mm -hmm. which can happen at home. And uh, we have also a bigger one, occupational first aid kit. And uh, now this occupational first aid kit is now for uh, occupation now. And uh, that one is more work serious. Uh -huh. For any workplace. So every workplace should have something yes, like that. Yes, every workplace should have something like this. It all have bandages, so have gloves, so have uh, antiseptics, dressings, uh, thermal blankets that can be able to assist even every workplace mm -hmm. to make sure you are safe hands mm -hmm. and in good way that you can be able to assist your employees. And could you just tilt it for um, the sake of our viewers seeing it? So that's so it has gloves and all those other things that yes. you see in this other small component. Uh, yes, this one is more to now the workplace end that okay. can be able to assist us uh, to deal with uh, any eventualities or any emergencies that can uh, be able to happen at workplace. Okay, and yes. how much does this one cost? Uh, this one costs for uh, 6,800. 6,800, and yes. this one costs about 2,500. Yes. Okay. Great. And then what is this here on, <laughs> on yeah. the floor? Let's that get one, to this. That one, Sakina, can be Yes, us. tell us. Let's like. take us through this one. <laughs> oh, we are talking about safety, yes. right? Yes, yes. So this is a PPE. A Proper, PPE. Uh, PPE. PPE. Yeah. Okay. Proper protective equipment. Uh-huh. Yeah, it will protect you against uh, blood pathogen. Uh-huh. Yeah, blood-borne pathogens. So uh, in case uh, maybe someone is ill and maybe it's something like... HIV, uh -huh. hepatitis B, hepatitis uh -huh. C, you are not supposed to get in touch with that person like direct contact. So you need to wear that to be safe. It will, be, it will protect you and it, it will protect other people around you. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's a PPE. You need to wear the mask. You need to wear the gown itself and then the 
the shoes. And this again, uh, where can Kenyans buy this? This one, if you talk properly with Osha Oh, so can. this one's not available, like yeah. I can walk into a store and buy something like this? No. No. It's, yeah, it has yeah. to be approved first. Okay, Andrew, yeah. you want to add on that? Yeah, we, we are having some companies in the country, although I don't have the names right with me away, a few that have a uh, few stocks of these particular items. Mm -hmm. uh, for the items that are, uh, you know, used for against biohazards like that one, they are not readily available because you know we have very few hospitals. So very if few, yeah. if you stop them, you'll have very few customers. Okay. Yeah, but we have uh, where you can they can be sourced okay. uh, from Kenya and even from other countries. Stella, that yes. big bag that is next to you, okay, I can see my tape in different colors. <laughs> so take me through this big bag. No, this is uh, it's a trauma bag. A trauma bag. Yeah, this one is a bit advanced. You need to be trained properly to use it. Okay. So this one, you are normally the U.S. Embassy normally donat, donates to us after uh -huh. training us. Uh -huh. So you can handle multiple casualties like critical cases using this one. It has the splints to stabilize the fractures. Okay. It has these steps to condone the environment, mm -hmm. and also to you can mark the casualties. Deep or, uh, depending on the severity of the injuries. So those different co colors mean... Um, like red is for the critical, uh -huh. and then yellow is for the delayed, green is walking wounded, and then black is deceased. Oh, yeah. okay. So uh, when you go to the scene, I'm sorry, I have to take you through this. Eh? Yes, no, yeah. please, take us. So when we, when we respond to the scene, mm -hmm. we shall have these lights. Because maybe it's at night, right? Right. And it's a big MCA, mass casualty incident. Okay. So we need to control traffic. We need to keep off people. We need to be just alone so that you can manage the scene. So you have to put on your light like this, and then you... Wave it. Yeah, you have to wave it so that people can see you. You can control the vehicles using this. You can control people using this. So it's really, really important for us. So you also have... Uh, Are those injections? Which ones? And on that side, those black, this, yes. These ones? Yeah. These are pens. Oh, those are pens, okay. Yeah, we mm. always make notes because if it's not written, then it wasn't done. The, okay. Yeah. I like so, that. If it wasn't uh, written, it wasn't done. Uh, when we are opening the airway of the casualty, maybe the, the person can't breathe properly. Right. Now, when it comes to serious matters, we have to fix the artificial airway management. Eh? Mm -hmm. So we have this OPA. Or of a angel area, you could see it in ICU. Mm -hmm. As angels, we can do it by ourselves. Right. When we are doing like hospital care, so uh, we have a. It's called an a laryngoscope. This one, uh, maybe most of you have seen it in the ICU. Mm -hmm. It is the one that doctors use. Even advanced paramedics can use it. Mm -hmm. You use it to fix the OPA through the patient's airway. Ah. So that they are able to breathe. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's what we use, and then you also have the special gauzes. This one is useful. It's an occlusive cover. Like if you have like a very critical, like abdominal injury, maybe it's a cut, and the intestines are out, you will call it. You will cover it properly, and your patient will be safe. Okay. Yeah. So this is like a more advanced. This is for you guys. You know, you guys who have been trained, <laughs> yeah, Henry. Sure. This yes. is for you guys. Yeah. This, for <laughs> yeah. this is what what we do at our best. Yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. you advise us to have this at least in every car. Yeah. And in a, every household at least. Yeah. yeah. All right. And workplace. we also advise and workplace. You. that one in every workplace. And this every in workplace. every workplace. Yes. Yeah. We on, we also advise your safety people or first aiders to advance to be like us. Oh, yeah. To get advanced. Yeah, to get to the level where we can say we can carry a red bag and know what we're doing. Exactly. Okay. And in the workplace, uh -huh. uh, maybe you cannot be in charge of a first aid box if you are not a trained first aider and if you don't have a valid first aid certificate. And I feel like those are the things. You know that period where you finish high school and you're waiting for university, mm -hmm. when we do computer classes yes. and go for driving classes? Mm -hmm. This is what young people should be learning. This is what we should be trained in. This is what house helps, matatu drivers, everyone I feel like needs to be trained on these things. Yeah. Because it's that simple. Like personally, I have learned how to do this. I just used to sit in the movies, you know, and mm -hmm. how to handle a baby at it. Yeah. These are literally life-saving skills. Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. We normally have classes weekly at St. John Ambulance. Ah! Yeah, weekly classes, uh, both for nannies. Uh, anyone can be able to be trained. This is a life skill. Yes. We don't dictate who to come, mm -hmm. but anyone can come. Yeah. Weekly classes, Monday to Friday, 
can come to our office or you can call out to your different ambulance, uh, different uh, work premises and then we can offer the services. Okay. Yes. And maybe to add on that. Yes, please. We also have dolphin classes. Dolphin are young kids, like ah. primary level, very young, as young as five years, six years. We have them. So we they train also them. get trained. They get trained yes. in schools. Mm -hmm. We train like high schoolers who are cadets. Uh -huh. And we also have adult divisions. Those are just volunteers. This is fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. You should visit us. I will. Place. No, yes. I feel like Kenyans should visit you because if your small child at five, six years old is getting such training, mm. there could also be an emergency and they know what to do. Quickly talk, quickly talk about types of drills. And yeah, uh, thank you, Zizi, for that. We remember recent drills which turned tragic. Yeah, the one at Strathmore? Most probably. Yeah. Um, we need to understand the issue of a drill properly. Mm -hmm. All Kenyans need to understand and all workplaces need to understand simple things like a drill is an examination, a mock examination. Mm -hmm. And you cannot do a mock examination if you have not gone through grade one to seven, mm -hmm. then you reach eight, then you do the mock examination. Mm. So a drill is like a mock. So a drill requires about five to six steps mm -hmm. before you come to the real drill. Okay. And if it is a medical drill, you have to have a medical case. The medical drills? Yes. Yes. I didn't even yeah. know the medical we drills. Have medical <laughs> we, we, I didn't even know they were medical drills. Yes. Yeah. We do. Okay. You know you can collapse here. Yes. Right now. God forbid, but yes. God forbid, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if that happens, it could be an illness. Mm. That's, then we need to prepare for that, such drills. Wow. Yeah. If they occur, we should be ready to conduct them. The second uh, one. Yeah. Oh, you wanted to? No, quickly, yeah, because yeah, of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The second one is a, a fire drill. Fire drill, medical drill. Security drill. Security drill. Right. First aid drill. First aid drill. Yes. Oh, wow. Very important drills. People need to learn about them. Maybe next time we can come back and talk about those. Specific on drills. drills. Specifically yes. on drills. Yes. And you guys promise to come. Because you've been amazing. Anytime. Yes. All right. Stella, Henry, and Andrew, I want to have you guys again. This was very informative. I'm Thank sure you. a lot of Kenyans have also got to learn a lot that they didn't even know of simple things. All right. Thank you. And um, thank you at home for your two hours um, time with us here on Weekend Express. I hope that you got to learn something, especially as the world is marking World Safety Day. I will see you at 11 a.m. for a quick update on stories making headlines. But for now, it's bye-bye.